Hey, you've been in demand. Uh, there's media, yeah. uh, the BBC and American media, they've been seeking your insights around what's developing in your homeland of Scotland. Uh, I mentioned a Christian politician in Scotland. Uh, give us a little insight, a bit of background for Aussies who are not really following the Scottish politics. I'm astonished that any Aussie is not following Scottish <laughs> politics. <It's> obviously, <laughs> I thought you were a cultured lot. No, listen, um, uh, i tell you why this is important. I mean, before people kind of switch off, I would say this is incredibly important because in this case, Scotland is the canary in the coal mine for the whole Western world. Because um, this could be true for Victoria, for New South Wales, we've got elections coming up, um, for the, the you know all of the states in Australia and, and for the federal government, where you get to a stage where someone says, these are the progressive values of our state or our country. If you do not share them, not, not just share them, but if you do not affirm them and celebrate them, you cannot be elected. You're not, you're not even allowed to stand. And that's a very important thing. So that, that's why I think this is important for this. The background is very simple. A young woman called Kate Forbes, who's actually a friend of mine. Um, she's 32 years old. She's a young mother. She's remarkably intelligent, had a remarkable career. Uh, is the Scottish Finance Minister. Her, she's in the Scottish National Party, which is the ruling party. She, um, her boss resigned, uh, Nicola Sturgeon resigned, and Kate Forbes, along with a man called Humza Yousaf, who's a Muslim, and <coughs> another woman called Ash Reagan, are standing to replace her. Now, Kate Forbes is way the favourite until she was interviewed. Um, and the people who did the interview, they knew this. This was a, you're a journalist, so I'm sure you'd never do this to me. This was a gotcha question. Mm. Uh, so they said, during the same-sex marriage debate, would you have voted for same-sex marriage? And she just looked at the camera and said, no. And it was like, people were shocked. I mean, it was an honest politician. That was the first thing. Everyone knew that was the, the answer, and they expected her to avoid it or to lie. But she didn't. And then... If you'll forgive the language, all hell did break loose and she's been attacked and, you know, lots and lots of different things. Um, I've written about this quite a lot. I've done interviews for it. But here's the astonishing thing. All the kind of commentary at all the, the press, all the media expected her to back down and to resign. She didn't. And as of today, she's actually ahead in the opinion polls, um, which it's it, so it's highly possible that... Um, an evangelical Christian will end up as the leader. Now, I still think the odds are slightly against her. Um, my colleague and friend across in Perth, Steve McAlpine, wrote a, a blog piece yesterday saying, you know, a, a Christian could never be a leader of a Western political party. And I phoned him afterwards and said, Steve, you may have got this one wrong. There's been a backlash. So it's it's very interesting. This is a very interesting scenario and of great relevance to Australians. <laughs> 